On December 18, 1944, the Supreme Court ruled one of the biggest cases called Ex Parte Endo in the Japanese community, which finally deemed the mass incarceration as illegal. The ruling helped pave the way for Japanese American freedom. Following the court's decision, the Roosevelt administration made a proclamation that Japanese Americans could resume life on the West Coast in the next month. On January 2nd, 1945, the entire Japanese community headed back home. All former inmates were given only $25 for their train ride back. There was no compensation and nothing was returned to the Japanese Americans. All their stores had been taken down and replaced and they had nowhere to go. All families came back with empty hands. The only employers that accepted them paid the minimum wage, which was not enough to support the families. But most importantly, the Issei, or the older generations, lost everything. Like the Issei who lost everything that they had built. All the, you know, farms and businesses and almost all of them lost all of it. And they were too old to start over, so they were left in a very precarious, you know, uncertain situation. And uh, that's the um, group that I feel that the government really ruined their lives, you know. Unlike the Nisei who were young and could start over again, the Issei could not. They immigrated from Japan and spent their entire adulthood building a sustainable life for their families. But when the internment camp started, they lost everything. Japanese Americans came back to nothing. All of the items in their shops were stolen and they had to start over again. Alien laws prohibited Issei from taking back their houses and lands. Just because the law permitted Japanese Americans to come back did not mean all racism ended. Vandalization and abuse were still prevalent in the upcoming decades. To prevent further loss, Congress passed the Japanese American Claims Act in July 1948, which essentially allowed Japanese Americans to file claims for compensation on the lost or stolen property by quote unquote, reasonable and natural consequence. The majority of the tax records of the Japanese Americans had already been destroyed by the IRS. The damage from the Japanese internment camps was also psychological. On June 5th, 1945, Dylan S. Meyer described how Japanese Americans had become depressed and felt hopeless as a community. Both Chizu and Paul had told me that after the camps, the majority of the older Japanese Americans could be diagnosed with a mental illness. Many Japanese Americans had been divided so much that the traditional culture was no longer rich in the younger generations. By the time the families got out of the camp, um, again, uh, anything that, you know, the culture that we had, the traditions that we had, you know, all that kind of stuff, it just went, it's gone. This called for a change. In the early 1960s, young Japanese Americans followed the steps of the civil rights movement and began their own movement called the Redress Movement. The Redress Movement advocated for more compensation. In 1976, the movement saw its first success when President Gerald Ford claimed that the internment camps were wrong. But this was not enough. They also pushed him to terminate the executive order, which at that time was still in place. In 1978, the Japanese American Citizens League called JACL, which was consisted of younger generations, asked for three measures to be met. The first was that $25,000 was to be given to all survivors of the internment camps. The second was that the Congress would acknowledge the crime the US government had done. The third was to set up an educational system for the children of Japanese American families. From 1980 to 1983, the movement pushed the Carter administration to condemn incarceration as unjust and motivated by racism and xenophobia. 
They asked for $25,000 for all survivors of the camps, but were only given $20,000. Later, after 1988, different presidents such as George Bush and Bill Clinton would write formal apologies to each of the remaining survivors. This event was monumental. Well, just the fact, in fact, many Japanese said, hey, I didn't even care about the money, but I was more impressed with the the letter from uh, Ronald Reagan, I think it was, who said that, hey, we screwed up, you know, white America screwed up and we are sorry. And that and, and we actually recognize the fact that we screwed it up. But do payment and money really equalize the events that occurred? The money never even came on time for the Issei who needed it the most. And they also didn't get any compensation because they were all dead when uh, redress passed. So or pretty much all dead. Maybe a few were around, but very few. We can also see the trauma today. The model minority myth is a great example. The model minority myth is one of the most prevalent myths among Asian Americans. The model minority myth boxes Asian Americans into a couple meek characteristics, such as shy, academic, and leaves no room for other interesting or unique characteristics. Many believed that the model minority myth actually originated from the Japanese internment camps. This was because many of the Japanese American survivors actually advocated for the Japanese American community to be silent in order to prevent the same event happening again and to prevent themselves from being called enemies. But I think that we were put into a situation when, where we felt vulnerable, that we felt that we, you know, the government can shove us around and do anything to us. So it, for the sake of survival, it was necessary to just keep quiet and work hard and just not make any trouble or, you know, don't call attention to ourselves and all that. So that was the traumatizing effect of camp for a lot of us, I think. It's just that we don't, we don't want to be seen as too foreign or too weird or exotic or whatever because well they can do things like throw us into jail or camps or whatever you know they could do that because they've done it for the sake of survival you had to be quiet now in conclusion the camps did end but do these events really just end there is much more that we have to see to understand about the Japanese internment camps. Like the model minority myth, some of the effects that occurred from the internment camps can still be seen today.